Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. In this video, let's take a little bit deeper dive into the application. For example, strings, cross-references, and analyzing the basic assembly. So I'm back on my desktop. I have the a.out file we looked at last time. So let's open that back up in R2. We'll also run our analysis again. Once the analysis is run, let's take a look at the strings within the data section. We can do that with IZ. Now here we can see that there is an access granted, an access denied, and a login string within the application. The access granted is actually an interesting string because that might be where we want to end up. So we can print out the disassembly at that location with PD one at and then we'll put the address of where it's located. So we'll copy this. This prints out the disassembly and it also gives us the sim.result which is the function where it's located. This is the X reference. Now we can print out the X references for all of the strings by doing a AXT for the references at symbol space at symbol space str dot star because this you'll notice is the str access granted that's how the strings are so we're going to say we want all the strings by specifying the star now we get a list of those same three strings that are up here but we also have the functions where they're located so sim.result sim.check password is where the access granted is or access denied and the main function contains the string.login. So access granted might be where we want to end up. So let's seek over to there. So we'll go s sim.result and we'll print out the disassembly so we can take a look at what's going on there. Now you'll notice that there's not much going on in this function. It's basically printing out a message with puts, it's printing out the access granted, and then it's ending the function and returning. So not really much is going on here. So what we really wanna see is when this function is actually called. We can do that by checking the cross references to the function that we're in. Now we can do that with AXT again, but we don't need to add anything else, just AXT. And we're gonna see that the check password function actually calls this function. So what we want to do is seek to that function. We'll go seek. And if we hit the tab, we can actually tab complete these. So that's pretty cool too. We can print out the disassembly in here. This function is likely where we make the decision of whether we have an access denied or whether we go and we actually get accepted. So we can check this out in visual mode to get a kind of broad overview of the decisions that are made by typing shift V and then we type the space bar to get the graph mode. And if we scroll down this, we'll see that a decision is made here with a jump not equals based on a string compare. So we're gonna compare two strings, the string that we put in and likely the string that is the password and we're either going to go to sim.result, which is where we got that access granted, or we're going to go over to this one where we get an access denied, right? So now we wanna analyze this a little further, kinda of see what's going on. So we can quit out of here. I'm gonna hit quit again, print out the disassembly. When we looked at the imports and the functions within this binary, we didn't see any encryption libraries to indicate there was encryption. We didn't see any functions that had names that would indicate there was some kind of obfuscation. So let's take a look at the assembly within this function and try to determine what the password may be. So down here we see a string compare. So that's likely where things are being compared, which means that the items that we're going to compare are prior to this. Now up here, we actually see some hex values going into some arguments and some variables. And we see Joshua right here. So if you actually know what Joshua is, comment below. You're probably pretty old if you actually know this. 
Now these words right here, the Josh, is actually associated with this hex value right here that's being put into the S1 variable. Now R2 is being nice to you and it's actually decoding these for you into string format, but you should know how to do those yourself. Now I don't know how to do it right within the terminal. If you do, please comment below and let me know how. But we can grab that. We're gonna use another tool that comes with R2 called Rax2. And I tried to do this from the terminal, but it didn't work for me. Some of them do, some of them don't. We're gonna use a minus S for string representation. And we're gonna paste in the hex, and that gives us the string representation in reverse order because we're in Little Indian, as you remember. So that's one way to do it, but if you were doing something way bigger and you needed some kind of automation, you can also do this with Python 3. And I'm gonna paste in a value here and then explain to you what that is. So we're gonna say, take our bytes from hex. So we're gonna take the hex and I actually pasted in the whole hex of Joshua in there in reverse order. So we have 6a, 6f, so 6a, that's the first byte, 6f is the second byte, and so on. And we ended with 7561, which is the ua. We're gonna decode that and use UTF-8 format. So if we do that, we get the full Joshua in string representation. So we can use this in scripts that we're using. Also later on, I'll get into actual um, R2 scripting. But for now, I just wanted to show you a couple ways to handle that if you see hex values within the terminal. And unlike IDA, you can't hover over it and select different formats, but we can use the other tools to help us do it. At this point, we likely know what the password is. It's probably that Joshua. But if it was not so obvious what the password was, we'd start analyzing the assembly and figure out what's going on and what the points of interest are in here. This is not an assembly tutorial, but let's quickly go through it for the beginners that are watching. The first thing I would do if I was checking out this assembly is get a really high level overview by looking at the calls within it and the jumps within it. So the first call we see is this call to string compare. So it's obviously gonna compare the argument being sent in right here with the password within the application that we saw earlier, right? And then after that string compare, we're gonna compare what comes back into EAX with zero. And then if it's not equal to zero, meaning that these values were not equal, we're gonna to jump to 121C. The address of 121C is right here, and this is your access denied. So if it doesn't jump to that, it's going to move zero into EAX, and then we're gonna call result. And we looked at result before, we know that is where the access granted is. So now we have the overall how the application flows. If we look a little bit deeper into the assembly, and start from the top, we're gonna to see the function prolog, which is what we see at the beginning of all functions, where we push RBP, we move the stack pointer over into this RBP, and then we're going to create space on the stack by subtracting 30 hex from RSP, which is the stack pointer. Now, on this stack, we're going to move RDI, which is this first argument, into the S2 variable. So now our argument, which would be test, when we ran the application, we put the password of test, that's gonna be in the S2 variable. And then the next thing we see is this stack canary, and that's just a compiler generated canary to check for overflow conditions. So we can ignore that. And then we start into the application, you know, the functionality of this function. The first thing we're gonna do is zero out EAX, because if you XOR anything with itself, EAX, EAX, it's now zero, so zero is within EAX. Now we're gonna move the password in the application that we have to guess into this S1 and var BH variables. And then we're gonna move zero into this 9H variable. And what we're gonna do now is set up for the string compare. So before a function, you generally have the variables that are being passed to that function. Right, so we have our argument, which is test, the value we sent in, 
and we have the Joshua in this S1 variable being put into RDX and REX registers, right? So LEA takes the load effective address of the S1 variable Joshua into RAX. Then this string compare is likely using the RSI and the RDI registers in order to compare the values. So we're gonna move what we put into RDX and RAX, which is this argument and this variable, into RSI, which is the source index and the destination index, and then we're gonna use string compare on those. Now, when the value comes back from string compare, whether it's false or true, you're gonna get the value put into EAX. Now, if we looked this up and we said, string compare, man page, or we could probably just do a man string compare as well, and we look at the manual page for that, we're gonna to wanna to look at what comes back, right? So string compare returns an integer indicating the result of the comparison. Zero if S1 and S2 are equal, and then something else if it's not, right? So a negative value if it's less than, or a positive value if it's greater than. So we know that if a zero comes back, then the two values are equal. The test we passed in and the Joshua. In this case, that would be not equal. So if we look back at our code now, EAX, if the string compare was correct, would be equal to zero. So we're gonna compare EX gets moved, MOV, into this var 14H. We compare that var 14H the value in it, because if you have brackets around something, so we have a D word here, and we have brackets around it, we're gonna look at the value at var 14H, and we're gonna compare that value with zero. So if those two are equal, we're going to, as we said before, not take this jump, because this is if it's not equal. So since we're not gonna take this jump, if it's equal, we're gonna go to this result and it's access granted. So that's the assembly if you were gonna look at it a little closer with the nuts and bolts of how it works. I just wanted to do a little bit of that so that beginners can get an idea before they hop into an assembly tutorial. But again, this is more how to use R2 and how to like actually use it for reverse engineering for people who already have some prerequisites. If you need the prerequisites, I would suggest take some Linux tutorials on how to use the command line do some C coding tutorials, do some assembly tutorials, and basic stuff like that in order to get you ready for this to continue on. So that's all I wanted to show with this video. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at how to actually decompile this assembly into decompiled code, C code, that you can look at, and you'll be able to review this a little bit easier rather than looking at it in assembly view, we'll look at it in a C representation of this assembly view. So if you learned something in this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share it out to your social media, and I'll catch you in the next video.